if you watch the show that I host normally, again, uh, I should probably introduce myself. My name is Dylan Radigan. I'm a friend of Jenks. Jenks off in Amsterdam doing God knows what. Uh, he'll be back on Tuesday after the holiday. Uh, my name is Dylan. I host the Dylan Radigan Show on MSNBC each day uh, at 4 p.m. Uh, in the afternoon Eastern time, so middle of the day, 1 o'clock here in California. And on the Internet, it's whenever you decide to watch it. The reason that I focus so much of my attention on these problems is not because it's a pleasure for me to focus all my attention on these problems, but because it's, I believe that in our democracy, it, it is my responsibility and the responsibility of any uh, journalist to legitimately, honestly report and assess the problems that we have, and more importantly, push that once we observe those problems, we actually can work to solve them, as opposed to just playing this circular blame game that's been going on for decades in this country to the benefit of some politicians and special interests, but it never solves any of these actual problems. The revolving door with the regulatory agencies, the bank scammers, the, the mining scammers, the oil scammers, uh, the list is too long. We're all familiar with it. The frustration can be overwhelming, uh, but like I said off the top here, uh, the theme for the couple hours, an hour, half hour in, is the news and what we can do about it. Uh, and what can we do about it? Uh, Carol Tavris, I think, has a very good line on how to deal with this and what really is the root problem uh, with the way we're dealing with our reality in this country. Carol's a social psychologist. The book author, Mistakes Were Made, But Not By Me, uh, and Carol joins us now. The extended title is Why We Justify Foolish Beliefs, Bad Decisions, and Hurtful Acts. Sound familiar? Um, Carol, beyond the title, what is the premise of your, of, the, of your book? Well, first of all, it's about, you know, it's not news that people will lie and deceive other people in order to get themselves off the hook, to avoid getting blamed for things, to avoid taking responsibility, to avoid going to prison, to avoid losing their spouses and so forth. This is not news. People know when they're lying to others to get off the hook. Our book is about the way the mind is designed to allow us to lie to ourselves, to deceive ourselves, and justify the mistakes we make by saying, oh, well, it was the best thing I could have done at the time. In fact, I didn't actually do a mistake. What I did was the best possible thing that I could have done. When we start thinking that way, when we become unable to look into the mirror and say, what went wrong here? Where did I go off the rails? Then we continue doing the same thing we've always been doing and dig ourselves in even deeper. Our book is about the mechanism in the brain that allows us to sleep at night and to allow, that allows so many of those bastards to sleep at night when we think they should be saying, holy cow, how did I... How did I screw up so badly? And so what do we do about it? Because don't, you don't have to be a social psychologist or a book author to observe this phenomenon very active inside of our federal government, inside of the corporate management suites of this country and around the world. Um, and like I said at the top, it's one thing for somebody like myself or Jenk, who hosts the show here on the Young Turks or any other journalist, to give you a, a, a elaborate detail as to exactly how screwed up everything is. But if, unless we can make well, but, the turn to wait, what we though, do about but, it. But wait, see, um, there's corruption. We all understand about corruption. Um, but what I think is far more interesting and far more insidious, because we all do this, yeah. is we all want to reject information that is discrepant with our beliefs, that disconfirms our beliefs. We call it in our book, this is what cognitive dissonance means. It's really uncomfortable when someone in your political party does something stupid, immoral, or fattening, okay, mm -hmm. or criminal, mm -hmm. uh, than it is when someone from the other party does something stupid, immoral, or criminal. Because then we say, oh, well, those people, you know, look at them, they're all stupid, immoral, and criminal. When our own side does it, what are we more inclined to do? Well, it was not so serious and not such a bad thing, and we minimize it or it's trivialize it. It's just one it guy. It they're, they're not all like that. Yeah, right. I mean, it's not, it wasn't such a bad thing. And da, da, da. So, you see, that's, that's the mechanism. And the polarization, the political polarization we see in our country now, what people m could do immediately for themselves is to become aware 
of the dissonance they're feeling when someone in their own party is behaving badly or doing something that they don't really approve of. Because the second they start approving of it, they're going to go down a slippery right. slope. So of let me give you an example. Let me give you an example, because I think there are actually a lot of people in this country right now that are going through exactly what you described with cognitive dissonance with our current president. President Obama was brought in on a campaign based on changing systems that so many of us view as corrupt, outdated, non-functional, the president himself observing many of those systems. At the same time, we've now watched a president that has not reformed fundamentally the banking system, but has just helped those who created it effectively cover it up. Uh, and there are strings of other things, and we can debate which one uh, is more offensive to, uh, to an Obama supporter or not. But for those who have this emotional attachment to this president, or the previous president had the same phenomenon with, with President Bush, and it, it goes on and on, but we'll use Obama because he's the current president. How do I deal with the fact that I'm sitting there and I'm thinking, Obama's my guy. I love Obama. I picked him. I want him. Listen to him. Look at what he says. And then I, I watch the policies. I look at the financial reform bill, and I see how it... it perpetuates and legalizes too big to fail. Here's I, how we, I, I go down that. So yeah, go ahead. Okay, here's how you deal with dissonance. Shimon Peres, when he was Prime Minister of Israel, did it just perfectly. Ronald Reagan, his great friend, went to Bitburg, Germany to lay the wreaths at the, 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 the German cemetery. Do you remember that one? And only mm -hmm. it turned out there were Nazi soldiers buried there. Yes. And it was a huge international scandal. And someone asked Peres, what do you make of what Reagan just did, your big friend? And Peres said, when a friend makes a mistake... The friend remains a friend, and the mistake remains a mistake. That is someone who is able to understand dissonance and not fall for it, because the usual thing we do when we're feeling dissonance is to either exonerate the friend or minimize the mistake. It's crucial to do both. You can be a Democrat and support President Obama and say, I support him, and I like much of what he's done, but when he's done something I disagree with, it's something I disagree with. And I don't have to say, because it's him, right. I minimize the mistake I think he's making. I can still protest that. I can still uh, speak out against that. And what if it's bigger than that? In general. What if your fundamental belief is that the government itself systematically serves special interests at the expense of the country, irrespective of either party, or who's the president? Yes. And let's then say you that you believe that this president, that you thought you this president, let me finish, president. that you thought that this was going to be the guy who was going to change that. And now you get in and you, and, you, and you start to think, hang on, maybe he's not that guy, although I still like him. What if the mistake that he is making is a direct betrayal of the reason he was your friend in the first place? Well, then it's your prerogative to say, I was grossly mistaken, right? I mean, as people, as people will do. When George Bush endorsed torture, he put a lot of Republicans in a state of dissonance because he's my president and he tells me that if we do something bad, um, uh, we, don't do thing, we, we don't torture because we're the good guys. Therefore, whatever it is we're doing, we're not torturing. But as soon as you do that, as soon as you say he's my president and if he tells me it's not torture, it's not torture, then you are justifying the use of torture and justifying our country's use of torture and, um, and not holding this president or his, his administration accountable for those uh, those abuses of the law. And it's the same, it should be the same with any politician. If we feel strongly about any particular point of view about politicians being in the pocket of corporations, my own interest has been the, the breakdown of the firewall between uh, scientific research and industry, as in the big pharmaceutical companies, then what we have to do is keep focused on the goal of what it is we want to change and press those in power to pay attention. Carol, and not, I, to, not to exonerate them just no, no. because we, yeah. we voted for them. Carol, I could not agree more, and I think that we, as a country, have suffered too much from exactly what you're describing, the cognitive dissonance of having voted for a particular politician and then the subsequent inability to observe the flaws or mistakes in that politician, whoever they may be. I, I couldn't recommend your book more highly. Again, Carol Tavers, the book, Mistakes Were Made, But Not By Me, Why We Justify Foolish Beliefs, Bad Decisions, 
and harmful acts. Uh, her counsel, if you're trying to deal with your own cognitive dissonance with a politician, whoever that may be, you want to be their friend, be their friend, but be don't deny friend. them their mistakes as well. Both can exist in the same universe. They are not mutually exclusive. That first step, mistakes are mistakes, your friends are your friends, so to speak, is the beginning of what may be a higher standard of accountability for all of our politicians, irrespective of your party affiliation.